Okay, kids. You ready to have fun on a uh, Friday night? I think I am. I've got a very full show for you with some actually really good news. It's been a very bad time for America. And it's time to start feeling good about being here again. All right. So just give me a couple seconds. Hi, Greg, and Wit on one of my pages. Glad to have you joining me, guys. And Glenn on the other show, the other page. Okay, let's do this, shall we? Let's feel good. Let's. I, I promise you this tonight, guys. You're going to be entertained, okay? Even if you disagree with me politically, you are going to be entertained. Whether you like it or not. So let's do it. La, 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 la. It's Friday in America, and it's me hanging out with a T-shirt, just chilling. Got my wife downstairs. Uh, my daughter is hanging out. I don't know where my son is, but uh, you know what? It's good to be alive, good to be in America. Let me get this mic out of my face because you're going to want to see me because I'm so handsome. Um, a lot of things to get to. Um, one of the positives is, and there's a negative, of course, of course, of course. Um, but one of the positives is the country st- seems to be starting to uh, recover uh, economically. Um, people want to get back to work. People are tired of it. Um, we had a giant bump with the, uh, with the protests that are going around the country and, um, uh, uh, they have really Im- impacted the country, but, uh, people are a tired of the coronavirus. Uh, people are tired of being locked up for the coronavirus and people are really pissed off that some violent people, even though it was a tragic death of a man in Minneapolis, that some people have decided they want to wreck the country and they're quite simply done with it. You made your points. You did your protest. God bless you. If you pe- if you peacefully protest, it's great. We get it. We get it. We all get it. <clears throat> we all think police brutality is wrong. We all think that George Floyd died. He was murdered. We get it. Okay. I don't need to see another protest. I don't need. Certainly don't need Al Effing Sharpton in Washington D.C. this weekend for the biggest protest. We freaking get it. All right. Uh, honestly, there, there's a point where you just you you just you made your point. Okay. We got it. Um, today's been a bittersweet day for me, and I'll explain why. <clears throat> one of the one of the uh, one of the things that is is bitter is a friend of mine who's been a friend of mine for sixteen years, one of my best friends, one of my best friends in the world. Today said that we are politically diametrically opposed, and I am no longer welcome in his house. Um. I've lost a couple of friends because I said coronavirus and our response, our response to coronavirus was stupid. That lost one dear friend that I suggested that uh, looting is wrong and the Antifa is a terrorist organization and that if we're going to look at the entire situation with race in America and police violence, which by the way, if you look at unarmed people with regard to African-Americans, I'm not going to get into that but, but you, you've got to look at some of the societal issues involved with um, uh, African Americans in the inner city in America. But that makes me a racist because I said things like, you, you can't have a successful society if you're going to abort 60, 40 to 60 percent of babies. It's tragic. It's a horrible tragedy that so many African American babies are dying. They die before they're born. That misogyny and violence and drug culture is celebrated in popular culture. I've been talking about this for 30 years. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> the first time I talked about it was Columbia, Missouri, and there was a, I was just a kid out of college, and there was a, a young couple, an African American couple, and they were celebrating their wedding night, and they had a party, and the and the groom got shot to death. And it was on a high crime area in Columbia, Missouri, oddly enough. And I mourned for him. I was like, my God, what? And then I got to know what's going on in the culture. And if you, if you just don't look at Chicago on Memorial Day weekend when 10 black people were killed by other black people, if you just want to avoid that, then, then suddenly if I, if I say something about it, then I'm not your friend anymore, then the, the issue will never be solved. It's terrible. It's sad. It's tragic. It's sickening. 
and <clears throat> America caught fire. And it caught fire because of uh, BLM, Black Lives Matter, uh, which, by the way, is not a peaceful uh, organization. It hasn't been. They wrecked Ferguson. Uh, and then Antifa got involved, and Antifa is a terrorist organization. And they have wrecked and burned and looted and destroyed thousands of businesses, killed people, killed a 77-year-old police officer who was retired protecting a, uh, a store in St. Louis. And you know what? Enough is enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hello, Jonathan and Linda and Jim and Sherry. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm tired of being called a racist because I love all people and I want black children to be raised in a wonderful country. And there are people, there are stories, dear God in heaven, there are people who are the biggest, the loudest protesters who've been the most successful. And if you look at Tiger Woods and you look at Oprah Winfrey and you look at Shaquille O'Neal and you look at Barack Obama and you see that there are poor people working in West Virginia in coal mines who die from lung disease, never making a dime, but they're privileged? Are you out of your mind? I'm just done with it. I'm tired of being called a racist because I just want to help people. Now, and hello, Mac. How are you? It's good to see you. We are a great country. We are a, an enduring country. We, we are a glorious country. We are the greatest economic uh, and, and uh, a socioeconomic power in the history of mankind and economic power. Uh, we are a voice of freedom. The, the, yes, we did have a history of slavery, of, of course, in Jim Crow, Democrat, by the way, Democrat policy. And, and we are not far separated from that just right before I was born. But you know what? My son is not a racist. I'm not a racist. I was raised colorblinded. Yes, there are certainly people who are racist, but I will tell you there are massive, massive, massive social issues that have to be addressed. When I look at the foster care system in America, and I've been involved with the foster care system for a very long time because uh, I'm adopted. And I see that, mm, boy, I don't even know, 60, 70% of the kids in foster care looking for forever families are black kids. And I see that 25% of them never get forever homes and age out of the adoption system. It breaks my heart. And when I also see all creeds and colors adopting these kids, including oh, gasp, shriek, white people raising black children, oh my God, and the hundreds of thousands of instances that that has happened and none of that is recognized. Because all that matters is this guy in Minneapolis who died at the hands of police. And again, it was a murder. I didn't think it was in any way, shape, or form appropriate. They should have known that he was being choked out, and he died. Wrong. <clears throat> there are other people talking about how he had meth in his system, uh, that he had uh, uh, other systems, but that doesn't matter. They had him uh, in a prone position with his hands behind his back, and they should have let him up. Oh, crap. Here's the good news. Are you ready for the good news, everybody? And by the way, we, I'm going to have some really funny video. Don't leave, okay? Natalie, hi! Kim, Wendy, uh, Jonathan, all you guys. I've got some really funny video. I want you to stick around for it because you're going to really enjoy it tonight. And unlike all the networks and everything, this is just you and me, okay? You're just watching a guy in his, in his, in his office. This, see this right here? That's, that's not the Washington uh, State Capitol. That's not the, the, you know, the United States Capitol. That's just a wall. All right, and I just made my dogs bark. <laughs> Unemployment rate fell to 13.3%. Uh, the economy added 2.5 million jobs last month, which is the largest number in history. Did you hear what I just said? Guys, 2.5 million jobs were added. Do you know why? Because America said that COVID-19 was bullshit, that a lot of people got sick and a lot of people died. But And, and the, the problem was that, that the, the people who were the most vulnerable were not protected, okay? Those in nursing homes in New York, the, the governor and the, the mayor allowed people with COVID to be put into nursing homes and they killed over twice as many people as died in 9-11. Okay, those should have all been protected, dear God in heaven. The rest of us, we were fine. I live in Johnson County, Kansas. Do you know what the death rate for 34 years old and younger was. Want to take a guess? 
Would you believe 0%? 0, 0, 0. 34 and under, 0, 0, 0. Uh, those who did get it were very elderly or had pre-existing conditions and should have been protected. But we should not have shut down our economy. economy. AMC theaters shouldn't be going out of business. We should not be missing baseball. We should have not missed NCAA basketball. And by God in heaven, we've got people going out by the thousands. Suddenly, it's okay. Last week, we couldn't have people getting a haircut, but Democrats are saying, go out in the thousands and riot and protest peacefully. And there are some who do. But you know what? A lot of it, and I'd say, actually, a really big part of it is violent. Oh, my God. Who am I going to unfriend now for telling the truth? Huge. 2.5 million jobs. People said, I'm done. I want to work. Do you know why? Because we like it. We get fulfillment from it. And it's okay. You know, it's okay to be successful. It's okay to make a living, to be proud of what you do and, and what you earn and what you can provide your family. I mean, my God, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And I've been to the point where I couldn't. But I'm glad now. All right. George Floyd's funeral was yesterday. God bless him, and I am sorry for what happened to him. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton were there because they are uh, they are pimps for race, and you know, pardon for the expression, but I won't even say that. They're just um, other words I could say, but they have used race forever, and they have used the uh, the uh, uh, black lives being lost, whether whether. Uh, the narrative was correct or not. And in this case, it was these people, this, this gentleman should not have been killed. But Al Sharpton is always will, willing to go ahead of March, even with Toronto Raleigh, which was a lie. And Jesse Jackson is always willing to uh, show up so he can raise a lot of money and show up and act like he cares. And uh, they've been doing this since Martin Luther King, or King, King Jr.'s assassination. Jesse Jackson was on the balcony and nothing has gotten better. In fact, things have only gotten worse. Al Sharpton spoke at the funeral yesterday. Here's a little bit of it, as long as you can handle it. I saw somebody standing in front of a church the other day would had been... Born. He's the only guy in the entire building wearing black leather gloves. Why? ...bought it up as a result of violence. Held the Bible in his hand. I've been preaching since... Now he's I talking about the uh, President of the United States who walked across the street... Lafayette Park to a historic church that uh, that uh, looters and violent the violent mob the Antifa tried to burn down. The president said, "I'm going to go over and I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to hold up a Bible," and he did. And of course, he's been uh, you know uh, told it's a prop. It's all these things. And here's here's the Reverend Al talking about it. I was a little boy. I never seen anyone hold a Bible like that. But I'll leave that alone. Really? Wow, big crowd there, Al. But since he held the Bible, if he's watching us today, I would like him to open that Bible. And I'd like him to read Ecclesiastes 3 to every season. Okay. So basically, uh, I can't take it anymore. Um, and, and again, I'm just going to say I'm sorry, sorry, sorry for George Floyd and his family. It's awful. Al Sharpton said that Donald Trump used the Bible as a prop. And I believe that Al, Pro, Al, Al Sharpton uses grieving families as one, and he has for years. Uh, that he continually is a, involved in coming to these funerals and speaking and commandeering them is ridiculous. He supposedly is going to lead the biggest march ever in the United States tomorrow uh, in Washington, D.C., and I hope and pray that it is, uh, that it is uh, peaceful. Um, honestly, Al Sharpton, I, I don't know why people keep reinvesting in Al Sharpton because he's never done anything good. He's never done anything good. Uh, uh, Bill de Blasio spoke in New York yesterday. He did, the, they did a, uh, uh, remembered ceremony for, uh, uh, excuse me, pardon me. He was in New York and, uh, and he, he did a, this was at, okay. This was at the George Floyd, New York um, uh, memorial service. Here he is, and the crowd would have none of it. I will not.
not be about words in this city. It will be about to everybody. Here is what we must resolve. George Floyd cannot have been allowed to die in vain. This man is uh, uh, beyond falling on deaf ears. People in the crowd were turning their backs on him because they know they've ruined, he's ruined New York because of his policies with regard to COVID-19. A lot of people died from them. A lot of businesses went out of business. And all of these businesses that were suffering so badly from his policies with regard to COVID-19 then ultimately had to have their, their businesses looted and sacked. And this a-hole <clears throat> continues to spout nonsense. And people are saying, you know, you're honestly, screw you. We have to make a change in this city and this country. I thank you. I thank you for being here for a change. To build a change. Oh, but let shut me up. tell you something. For all of us. Oh, shut up. Shut up with your tie and your long sleeves. Shut up with your nonsense, you, you, you hack. You hack from hell. You are nothing more than a typical liberal Democrat who's been in charge of all the major metropolitan areas of the entire country, and things have never gotten better. Shut up, you hack. Who have not walked a mile in the shoes of the black community or communities of color for all of us who know white privilege we need to do more yeah you know white privilege yeah you know, again i grew up in southwest iowa uh a poor kid my family is all blue collar people they bust their asses i got a nephew who busts his ass seven days a week all four seasons um yeah, people work in coal mines and live in appalachia and live in southern missouri and live in in the south and, and you know honestly tired of this white privilege stuff dear god in heaven we are all one group of people or because we don't even fully recognize the daily pain that the racism in this society causes we need to do more we will so it will not be about words in this city it will be about change oh dear lord how many how many promises of change are you gonna have to go through dear lord honestly hi stacy i haven't seen you before i know tom and brandy hi and ben what's up so Drew, B, uh, Drew Brees said that uh, kneeling uh, during the national anthem is disrespectful, and he got all sorts of heat for it. Here is uh, uh, people burning, I think this was him, uh, burning jerseys. Yeah, there you go, the burning uh, Drew Brees jerseys around the country. Oh, by the way, this is not a real Drew Brees jersey. This is honestly, this is a, uh, seriously, somebody burned this. It's a knockoff. It's, a, it's an NFL knockoff because nobody would burn an NFL jersey because they're so freaking expensive. There he is, burning the. Look at it; it's really bad. There's another one. That's not a. That's not an official. That's a T-shirt with nine on it. Because the jersey's like hundred fifty dollars. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna burn a jersey of uh, him because you know that jersey. It's a T-shirt. There you go. Yeah, not even a jersey. There's another one. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So he he apologized. He uh, he kowtowed. There's a thing called kowtowing, which is um, during the uh, Chinese Revolution. It was what. People did when they uh, disagreed with the government, and the government found out uh, they would kowtow to save their lives. They would they would bow pitifully, as pitifully as they could, to beg forgiveness, and that's kind of what Drew Brees did with regard to that. Uh, I want to get to some rapid fire uh, uh, video before we go any further. And by the way, <clears throat> I think it is disrespectful to uh, bow uh, to kneel during the national anthem. I just do. Sorry. Um, I, I spoke to a gentleman at, at my work the other day. He's a, uh, uh, Afghanistan war veteran. He has a purple heart, which means he got injured in battle. Uh, he has PTSD as well. And he said, I consider it disrespectful when you kneel, considering that you are rich beyond most people's wildest dreams, including white people. And you play a sport that most of us give up in high school. That's your living. You drive Bentley's to the stadium to get out into luxury buses and then you play a game and you retire with a pension that no one could ever imagine. You have lived the American dream. There are so many people, uh, maybe that's Asian, maybe that's Hispanic, maybe that's white, maybe that's white, who have never lived that kind of American dream. And for you to say that the only people who are being excluded from it are African Americans is honestly, uh, is disrespectful. But according to the person who shut me out of his life forever, I'm a racist. Okay. In New York City, the Jewish community, after a night of protests where a lot of businesses were broken into and a lot of glass smashed in front of those businesses, which means that uh, they broke the glass in the windows of the buildings. In case you didn't know, in 1938, a lot of Jewish people 
uh, were in Germany, and there was a thing called a Kristallnacht, and uh, and uh, Jewish uh, uh, businesses were targeted by people who all wore the same outfit. In this case, it was brown shirts. In 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 the United States of 2020, they wear black masks and black hoodies and black pants, and and uh, they they wear backpacks, and they're called Antifa. All right, and they break out all the business windows, and the and the and the glass breaks on the ground. And so, a uh, crystal knocked is a whole hell of a lot like what happened in Washington D.C. and around the country. A lot of businesses that are ethnic owned, including Jewish. Here are uh, Jewish people in uh, Washington D.C. cheering the police because they know about their nights in broken glass. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine people cheering those murderous pigs. Yeah. Hello, Craig. Craig's watching. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Woo. Can you imagine me in a police officer today? Anywhere? Being attacked, being firebombed, being uh, demonized. And this is how many times have we done this? How many times do we have to do this? In Buffalo, New York, people walked out. Uh, police walked out. Their special operations unit walked out, said, I'm done. In New York City, I don't blame them. In Minneapolis today, the city council voted to disband the police for a new revolutionary style of policing. If I were in Minneapolis, if I lived there, I'd get the F out. <sighs> Hi, Tommy. How are you tonight? Thanks for joining me tonight. Do appreciate it. And, uh, and James. All right. We appreciate you guys watching. <clears throat> Here is, uh, let me see what this is. I've got, uh, hold on. Yeah. This is a, uh, a little, I'm going to refresh my memory here. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Okay. This is in Washington, D.C. It's in New York. This is a journalist. He's hanging out and he's watching the, uh, the march. Uh, against uh, police brutality, which everybody doing. But this is one of the uh, vinyl ones. This has the Antifa, uh, and it has BLM. BLM is not completely peaceful. Sorry, if you carry a, if you carry a sign that says no justice, no peace, that's a threat. But he's, he's waving. He's like, hey, man, thumbs up. Thumbs up here. Yeah, I'm on your side. Well, guess what? The protesters said, um, no, you're, uh, you're white, and therefore you're the enemy. Why? Hey, thumbs up. Good job out there. You can break out anybody else's window, but I'm on your side. What? Why are you? What? Oh. We're on your side. We're on your side. We're on your side, dude. We're on your side. What are you doing that for? Oh, oh you don't do, dude. We're on your side. Holy shit. We're on your side. We're on your fucking side. We're on your side, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, I hate to tell you this. Uh, they're not on yours. Uh, Greg Hudson says Bill Clinton has been uh, very quiet. Yeah, 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 I don't know what that's about. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Washington, D.C., if you clean up buildings, it's racist. So if there's a graffiti from Black Lives Matter on buildings, and, they, and by the way, graffiti is never acceptable because graffiti is uh, on other people's property. It, it always has been. It always has been vandalism. Sorry if you think it's artful and wonderful. If you don't approach the business owner and say, hey, can I spray paint your business? And they say no, uh, you don't do it. Otherwise, it's a crime. That said, uh, somebody approached three young college women, presumably, trying to clean up one of the nice buildings in downtown D.C. with the messages scrawled upon them. And, uh, of course, they're racist because of it. Why are you guys removing Black Lives Matter's graffiti? Why are you doing that? We tried over there and see it wasn't coming off because it's fairly obvious that somebody vandalized the buildings. Why do you ask? Why? But why do you want that to come off? Because it's vandalism and the spray paint doesn't belong on the building and all that. Why? Because it's the federal building. Yeah, that's. But so you don't care about black lives then? Oh, that's the. (laughs) Okay, I didn't realize that. If I cleaned off graffiti on somebody else's property and all that, that I hated black people. Okay, okay. Yeah, sure. That's what this... We certainly do care about black lives. We really do. We're just cleaning up the... Because honestly, if the whole city looks like this, it's going to become Detroit. Not enough to leave up a message. Yeah, I think you're you're messaging. We get it. That's fine. 
Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, right. Not not a great way to use your white privilege, ladies. Oh, there not you go. Yeah, I just I'm using my white That's privilege disgusting. here to clean the building. Wow. Wow. No reason. That'll probably get me banned from at least one of my friend's houses forever. Okay. Oh, oh, this is funny. This is a protest. Um, uh, these kids decided to taunt police, and here's the deal. If the police say, you can yell, you can do whatever, but don't cross the yellow line because that's a threat to me, uh, something's going to happen. So here is uh, what happens when you're an anti-fa or you're an anti-police protester and you cross the yellow line and you, you, you get in the face of an officer. This is no peace. Fuck the police. Fuck, yeah, F the police. Justice, no peace, F the police. That's nice rhyming there. I kind of like that. They've changed it. It used to be pigs in a blanket, fry it like bacon. Not exactly a rhyme. Yeah. Have the police. Give me a piece. I don't know what. Chicken McNuggets, 12 piece. What? Have the police. Give me a 10 piece. Chicken McNuggets. All the way to fuck it. Fuck the police. Fuck the police. Have the police. Oh, yeah. But don't have chicken nuggets because they're great. I got my daughter a 10 piece tonight. She absolutely was thrilled about it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, there you go. You're going to get bit in the ass. And, and while you're at it, uh, F your dog, too. You know, listen, I know that whatever turns you on, but you're not going to F my dog. Sorry, it's not going to happen. But it did. Okay. Oh, the mayor of L.A. said that he's going to uh, defund the police. He's taking $150 million from the police and giving it to, uh, I guess, African-American charities. It's going to solve everything. Going to fix it. Yeah, $150 million from the cops' budget, giving it to communities of color instead. So we don't know exactly what the money's going to be used for. But honestly, if I was a police officer in L.A., I'd be saying, uh, F the police, F you. Whether our city council and I would commit to reinvesting in black communities and communities of color, in those places left behind. A lot of people listening who might not know the statistics, many of which I shared last night, might not know that in America, the average white household has $171,000 of average household wealth. Really? Not in my house. Not in my house. Paul Chapa has joined me. Amy, hello. Hello, guys. I do have some fun video coming up here very shortly, um, and I uh, would encourage you to stick around. Also, can you give me some emojis, some love? Show me some smiles and all that stuff. I do have my Facebook page back at Rob Carson Show. Do appreciate that. Pardon me. Um, this is a gentleman in St. Louis. He was uh, 77 years old, and um, his murder was uh, live streamed on um, Facebook. David Doran was 77, and he was protecting a uh, pawn shop in St. Louis on, of all places, Martin Luther King Boulevard. If you've lived in different municipalities around the area, unfortunately, and it's a, it's a, it's a tragic um, insult to Martin Luther King Jr.'s memory, but all of those streets in various cities, if you see Martin Luther King Boulevard, it's going to be the worst place in the world. And it's not because of... Uh, uh, systemic racism okay it's it's not because of that there's a lot of things involved there but uh here is uh here is a gentleman apparently whose life does not matter um he was shot to death and left to die on a sidewalk by a thug t-h-u-g david Dorn was a was a fine captain uh, many of us younger officers looked up to him he, re he retired probably in 2004 or so but very well liked uh, very pleasant uh, and his and his wife still works here, and so uh, very sad time for our agency. Uh, we will honor him. Hey, source Alyssa Toomey joins us live outside that store on Martin Luther King Drive with more on this developing story. Martin Luther King Drive. It's unfortunately a sad tribute to Martin Luther King Jr. That they're always hell on earth for us this afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Claire. Just an absolutely tragic development to learn and confirm that David Dorn is, in fact, a retired St. Louis City police officer. And police say he was killed by looters last night outside of Lee's Pawn and Jewelry, where I'm standing. So Those are peaceful protesters. So right now, there is a homicide investigation underway in Lee's Pawn and Jewelry, despite the fact that there are construction workers. Just real quick, it's not jewelry. It's jewelry. Just off the subject, that, that's honestly... Dear Lord, uh, 
he doesn't matter. His life doesn't matter. He was on the planet for 77 years. It doesn't matter. He was working part-time. He's retired. Live, stream, live streamed on Facebook. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Joe Biden had a, uh, uh, what, a deplorable moment. He was being uh, interviewed by Don Cheadle. I guess Don Cheadle has a... Uh, podcast and he says that there are 10 to 15 percent of people out there that are not very good people he says that he says that 10 to 15 percent of america which is like 30 million to 50 million people or something are not good people that's what he said can you imagine that joe biden said that 30 to 50 million people in the country are not good people here he is almost cogent for at least 20 seconds you will have to will have to address these issues straight on. And the words By the way, Don Cheadle, fantastic actor. The president says matter. So when a president stands up and divides people all the time, you're gonna get the worst of us to come out. The worst in us all to come out. This president talks constantly talks about equality without without lecturing, talks about and has ministry. Uh, now just real quick before COVID the, uh, the lowest African-American unemployment rate in recorded history. Okay. Uh, the lowest unemployment rate in 60 years. Um, I, I, could, I could go on and on and on. And what is this jackass who's been a senator for 40 years, what does he have to show? What does he have to show the African-American community? Do you think he's going to reinvent himself? If he gets in the White House, he won't even know which freaking house to go into. He'll go to the vice president's residency. That is my house. No, Joe, dude, you were there like four years ago. That's that's your old house. It looks like the country. The rest. God, it changes attitudes. And it's about the attitude of the country. Do we want our kids? Do we do we really think this is as good as we can be as a nation? I don't think the vast majority. Oh, God, you've had your. You've had your day in the sun. Goodbye. And by the way, you might want to have those things on your forehead looked at because the sun really. I mean. Go go to a dermatologist. People think that. I'd be con- probably anywhere yeah. from ten. Just a little, of, you know, just a little scrape, and then you know, get a test. And fifteen percent of the people out there are just not very good people. What? what, 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 what hold hold on, hold on, hold on. The people out there are just not very good people. Hold on, hold on. Majority of people think that. There are probably anywhere from ten to fifteen percent of the people out there that are just not very good people. Ten to fifteen percent of the nation are not very good people. Wow. But that's not who we are vast majority of people are decent. We have to appeal to that. We have to unite people. Bring. Do, do you realize what, what he's just said? I mean, do you realize it? Hello, Amy, my niece. Hello. Good to see you. Um, wow. If, if Joe Biden thinks I'm not a good person because I, I, I support a strong country and opportunity for everybody, then you know what? I'll be a bad person to him, but I'm not smashing out windows and stealing shit. I'm not spreading anarchy. What about those people? Those are the 10 to 15%. They're not even that. Those are the not good people, you jackass. 22-year-old rioter, and she has a lot of, you know, pent-up anger because she's been uh, oppressed. Oh, she's a white girl, 22-year-old Michigan woman. Her name is uh, Alexandria Alley Lyons of Grand Rapids, arrested for damaging businesses in uh, in Grand Rapids because you know she is uh, uh, you know she's a repressed uh, you know white girl from the suburbs who's 22, probably played a lot of soccer, took a lot of hits to the head when she was a kid, never got a scholarship out of it, and honestly, it's a largely unpopular sport. But anyway, Ali Lyons, uh, he, she, she just got to do kind of goad fellow rioters into wrecking retail locations, and she could spend about 15 years in jail. Yay! We now know that a second person's facing rioting charges from late Saturday night, and now a 22-year-old woman joining the... 18- Oppression, man! Systemic racism, man! 18-year-old charged yesterday... Say, where is that Forever 21? We'd like to just go ahead and loot it, because I'm 22. Both face up to a decade in prison. Bye-bye! Barton Dieters was in court bringing us more details, including video of the actions in question, Barton. The publicized, has had a publicized run-in with the law as a Granville High School student, but now she's facing a very adult felony. Wait a minute, she's got a history of being a douche? Oh. 
The common thread is social media, which was her alleged undoing in each accusation. <laughs> this is some of the video that comes from an account bearing... Her name is Ali. She's like Ali Lyons of Grand Rapids, and she has a major social media presence. Bring her name in Normally, her- she normally just sits on her counter in the bathroom and does half-boob shots for her Instagram, but apparently she decided to riot. Face. <laughs> It shows some of the now all too familiar destruction from Saturday night into Sunday morning. Now, Allie Lyons is in jail and appeared via video in a Grand Rapids courtroom where she learns she is charged with inciting a riot at 180 Monroe, a charge that carries a 10 year maximum penalty. Hey, hey, go help them! I'm saying go for the maximum. Do you understand these two charges then and the maximum penalties? Yes. A few blo- By the way, her lashes look spectacular there. With the, with the blue of the mask, super! Looks away, 82 Ionia houses the friend of the court in Kent County Prosecutor's Office. It was vandalized and burned, and there, she's charged with inciting a riot. In the video, a woman can be heard shouting obscenities at the building. 82 Ionia! As a 16-year-old, Lyons pleaded guilty to indecent exposure stemming from a 2014 act with another teen in which she posted the evidence of the act on social media, and then it was shared worldwide. In 2018, she spent 147 days in jail after she was caught with less than half a gram of heroin, according to court records. Her bond is set at $25,000, five times that set for 18-year-old Adrian Baker, who was arraigned Monday and is out of jail on a $5,000 bond. Love the hair. That's just that spectacular hair. Bond. Are you kidding? Lions will be back in court in two weeks. For- yeah. Uh, remember when heroin used to mean, uh, what's her name? Uh, the pilot, Earhart. Yeah, yeah. Heroin used to be completely different. Amelia Earhart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was my heroin. Now you carry around your heroin in a bag. Hello, Dave. Hello, Greg. Greg says, when he shifts in his chair, do you think he's holding a fart? Are you talking about me? No, I just fart. Okay. <clears throat> this is a, a disturbing video. Just be ready for it. Just be ready for it. This is a man who's being kicked in the head while he's down. They found the kid. Watch this. Hold on. It gets better. Uh, no, it gets worse. Uh, Oregon, Portland, Oregon. Uh, this guy's uh, left motionless on the ground. Uh, protesters heard boasting, knock the mother effer's ass out. Uh, another nearby man can be hurting. Who the F are you running your mouth like that? Um, what you don't, you will not see after this is one of his teeth is left in a pool of blood afterwards when he was kicked by someone after he had been knocked out. Hey. Here it comes. Hey. Holy, stop! So that man, and I apologize for the graphic violence, but um, he was kicked in the head by a 14-year-old. He was kicked in the head by a 14-year-old, and if I was that 14-year-old's parents, I would beat the snot out of him. Uh, I'm not into corporal punishment. Well, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't beat the snot out of him. But I would take my kid into jail and say, uh, or into the, into the courthouse of the police station and say, he needs to go to jail. This kid needs to go to jail until... Uh, at least juvie to his 21st birthday. I'm not into physical violence. I don't beat people. I've never beaten people, so I apologize for saying that. But he needs to go bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Because he would soccer kick somebody's face while they're out. You got a hole in your soul, brother. You got a hole in your soul, little brother. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that either. I don't want to do that. I want to do some more... Um, Because I don't want to be like completely negative here. Because there's you know a lot of things I want to talk about. This is funny. Uh, Timothy O'Donnell disguised as the Joker, easily recognizable from his uh, neck tattoo, set fire to a Chicago police SUV on the Loop. The photographs from witnesses showed him uh, wearing a Joker mask. Here he is wearing his uh, Joker mask. Joker mask. There he is a Joker mask. There he is. That's his liter- little little because he was inspired by the movie the Joker. I haven't seen it yet. I, I, I would like to. My son says, don't watch it. It's, it's very disturbing. Don't watch it. There he is, the jackass. He set fire to a, uh, an SUV. Here he is unmasked, which is much worse. 
<laughs> what would you rather have? Honestly, Joker mask. Hey, he's kind of kind of attractive. Unmask. God in heaven. What a do. Who the hell? Literally, it looks like that that trail that they do in the and the uh, the uh, Matrix movies. It's a trail of the you know the, the, the letters. What does that spell? What does that spell? It looks like he ate ink ice cream and it spilled. What does that say? Was he on his neck? I have no What an idiot. What an effing mother effing idiot. There's the masked jackass with his neck tattoo. And there's the unmasked jackass with his, with his, uh, with his tattoo. Uh, go, go to jail, you idiot. Go to effing jail. Any idiot who'd put a tattoo on his chin like that? I mean, honestly, honestly. And when was the last time you, you know, washed your hair? God, what? What? Really? What? Uh, I'm going to save this stuff. I'm going to save the, I'm going to save some of the other stuff here. Oh, this is funny. Now, now this is kind of funny. This is a, uh, a douche, um, stealing a, uh, an IMAC and, and in New York, he, he breaks out a window. He goes in there and George, George Floyd protests. If you ask any of these people what they, uh, you know, who they were protesting, they wouldn't even know George, George Floyd's name. Honestly. They wouldn't know his name. They wouldn't know in New York. It, it happened in Minneapolis, Minnesota. There's a state called Minnesota. And this little dickweed got what he uh, what he asked for. He, he tried to steal an iMac. And then, of course, when you're in a den of thieves, somebody is going to get it from you. This makes me smile. Oh, you're going to rob oh. oh. There he goes. There he goes. My computer. Yo, don't rob, yo. Oh, no. Yo. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. Yo. I'm going to get that. You the iMac. Oh, that's a nice computer. We're gonna beat the snot out of you and take it from Bro. you. Yeah. Yo, ch -ch yo, come on, come on. Well, don't I'm gonna take that. Yo, don't do that. Don't I'm do that. take that. Oh, 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 oh. Yo. Oh, too bad, so sad. You little dick. No, come on. Now, take it away. Take it away. Take it away, you thief. Oh, I love this. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yo, chill. Bye bye. Too bad, so sad. You little thief. All right, let me see who's on here. We've got uh, we've got uh, Carol and James and uh, Greg. Eh, I'm not going to do this either. Let's move on to some funner stuff. And I'll share some other stuff here very shortly. Okay. Let's move on to the to the lighter stuff. And I'll save some of the other big news stories of the day. Because honestly, do you, would you would you like, uh, let me just real quick, do you want more serious uh, stuff like that? Or do you want to have a little bit of fun and, and play some really funny viral video that'll make you laugh? Just give me some emojis real quick, real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Real quick. Jeremy, what do you want to see, man? What do you want to see? Uh, Aaron, hello. Want to see some, you know, kind of funny stuff? I can do that too. You ready? Here we go. Yes or no? Aaron just joined me. Let's go ahead and refresh my other page real quick. Because I am on two pages right now, live, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and have some fun here. This is, uh, da -da, I'll do the Nickelodeon thing here. Oh, no, nah, I'm not going to do that either. Well, actually, I kind of do. Uh, Lake of the Ozarks, um, uh, about a week, uh, two weeks ago, Memorial Day weekend, um, people got together at Lake of the Ozarks and they uh, ignored social distancing rules because of COVID-19 and they had a party. And today we find out that there are no cases uh, linked to people having fun. Here is the, uh, here is the original um, party at the lake and the, and the report that said that everybody was going to die. We'll open any of your social media feeds this weekend, and you'll likely see this. Viral videos of people packed into pools and bars at the Lake of the Ozarks for the weekend. Clearly not six feet of distance between many of those folks. And now the actions of these partiers and the places that hosted them is drawing national attention. Everybody was very racist. These are all white trash people, and everybody was going to die. And harsh words from local leaders. It was packed. Scott Passmore, an anchor at the CBS affiliate in Phoenix, says he was amazed at this site at a Lake of the Ozarks hotspot. Just uh, blown away by how crowded it was. I mean, it looked like a typical Memorial Day weekend, but you would have never known there were any coronavirus fears anywhere. 
Backwater Jack's Bar in Osage Beach hosted a party they've been advertising for I want a party there. For weeks, the Zero Ducks Given Pool Party. Their blog saying they'd be taking precautions, including operating at reduced capacity to allow for social distancing. These videos apparent evidence that wasn't happening. Just how densely packed would you say it was? Like a, a pool that holds 100 people had 200 people in it. <laughs> That's how crowded it was. Passmore says he kept his distance. I didn't want to go jump in the pool, I'll tell you that. I wouldn't have jumped in that pool if there was no coronavirus around. Well, I think there's some other things you probably want to want to be in the pool for, uh, just because there are a lot of people drinking a lot of liquids and, you know, just drinking a lot of liquids and the bathroom is a long way away and I'm a little buzzed right now and, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The oh. others clearly did not. It was mostly young people, I'll say that. It looked like they were just there to live their life and have a party, and they couldn't care less about it. The reaction... And nobody died. These videos and others posted from bars on the lake was... Thank you for undoing weeks of quarantine, disrespecting healthcare workers. Cross country, everybody's going to die, but they didn't. Whiffed millions of views and hundreds of comments, mostly of... Hi, Joanne. Concern. Pathetic, wrote one person on Facebook. Thanks for undoing weeks of quarantine. I just said that, yeah. Quarantine. Oh, the folks have made a conscientious decision. To Dude, you got to let the mustache go a little bit there. You're cutting way short there, buddy. Don't even have it. Here. Our businesses are open. Osage Beach Mayor John Oliver. You gotta, you, dude, you got to let that grow a little. That looks, that looks like an eyebrow there. That's, yeah. Oliver says he has not seen the videos, but says Missouri's stay-at-home orders were lifted weeks ago. And while he says he won't. Because they were stupid. Wants people to be safe. The reality is this. The obligation, from my perspective, is for the individual themselves. In other words, if they come. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you saying personal responsibility? God, those. Dude, the, their eyebrows, they, that looks terrible. Lake of the Ozarks, or if they stay in St. Louis. Like Burl Ives and, uh, you, know, you know, night before, what was it, Christmas, the, the Santa Claus is coming to town? Uh, if they go someplace where they don't feel comfortable, then I applaud them for making the decision not to go in or go somewhere else. Okay, there you go. Nobody died. Uh, zero new COVID-19 cases linked to the Lake of the Ozarks partiers. That's the headline. Let's do some comedy now, shall we? Horrifying moment. A banker decides on his 30th birthday to, uh, to jump in a swimming pool from a window. And uh, this, is, this is just going to tell you it's painful. This is, this is, this is, this is painful. He's a Russian guy, Dmitry Prigorodovich, celebrating his 30th birthday. Decides to jump at the window above swimming pool. And this is what happened. <laughs> Okay, here goes. No! That. Mm. The song, I think, is I'm an idiot and I just hurt myself. Let's watch it again. Oh, let's win it from the beginning. Sorry. Go! That. You are an idiot and you're stupid and now you are hurt. <laughs> you drink too much vodka from Chernobyl. Now you won't be able to walk on your foot. Here it comes again. Here it goes again one more time. Oh, that's, mm, mm. Thank you, Weekly World News, for that glorious video. Uh, here's the deal. Um, unfortunately, a stunt did not go as planned. Dimitri suffered torn ligaments, a bruised chest, and has since had two operations to heal his injured hands and legs. His left arm and leg have stopped working. That's, uh, he says he doesn't regret his misjudged jump because the footage became popular among his friends. Wow. Uh, oh, this is incredible. So, in Washington, D.C., there was a thunderstorm the other night. Two members of the South Carolina National Guard went to the hospital with injuries because they got struck by lightning, Lafayette Square. Check out this lightning strike of the Washington Monument. This is crazy! <laughs> Boom! There it is. Can you even imagine? Holy hell. Let's watch it again. Oops, there it is. There it is. 
Boom! Unbelievable. Can you imagine being in the top of that building? Uh, anyway, uh, the, the National Guard people are apparently going to be okay. Oh, this is funny. So there's this, uh, there's this thing called, uh, they're calling people who are very hyper-involved, busybodies from hell, who you get in other people's business. They call them Karens. Did you know that? They're calling them Karens. They're like, uh, I don't know. There was a show in the, you know, when I was growing up in syndication called Bewitched and Gladys Kravitz lived next door and she was a busybody and she was always involved in uh, Darren and, uh, and Samantha's life, even though she was legitimate because, you know, she did, Samantha did shit like turn Darren into a donkey when she was looking in the window. So it was weird, right? It was weird. She was kind of okay, but this is just being a busybody. And this is a woman, she, she doesn't realize that children drive these little cars called power wheels and you don't need a license. So Karen in this park decides to uh, berate mom for her let, letting her kid drive an unmotorized or a motorized <clears throat> non-licensed vehicle without a license. You can just let your little kids drive all over the place with it. They're playing. That's what the park is for. I never saw a car in here before. It's a I never saw a car in here. You kids, get off my lawn. It's a power wheel car, man. Bother me. What bothers me is you have doesn't have a driver's license. This kid in here doesn't have a driver's license. He's just a little kid. And you're not with him. Yeah, he's not with him. Let's, I got to watch this again. Dear God, you can't be serious. Hey, that's what the park is. Just go home and sit on your porch and say, get off my lawn. I never saw a car in here before. It's a I never saw a car in here. It's one of the miniature cars. Either that or it's a regular sized car, and those kids are huge. It's a power wheel car, man. bother me. Not sure. My vision is a little, look, gone a little south. What bothers me is you. Go Biden. Biden is awesome. You have a little kid in here that doesn't have a driver's license. He's just a little kid, and you're not with him. Hey, sis. I know we've been talking about maybe. Mom should move out of her house and stop driving her car. Uh, probably now be a good. She went to a park the other day and she thought that kids needed a license for driving a Power Wheels. I should we should we talk to Dad too? Mm. Okay, <clears throat> so there you go. This is funny, guy. Uh, this uh, moron. He is at a uh, what a. Uh, 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 in, in Serengeti National Park in Tanzania with an open window near a lion. And the lion was being docile and just sitting there, and he decided, hey, kitty, kitty. Hey, kitty, kitty. Hey, kitty. He just thought he'd pet the kitty. He just thought he'd pet the kitty. It's not a good idea. Oh, look at the kitty. Look at the kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty. Here's a bowl of milk. No, I'd rather have something dead. Uh, but I want to kill it first. Hi. Hey, look at the kitty. Window. Okay, okay, all right, okay, okay, no kitty, no kitty. No milk, roll with the window. Okay, good. Floor it, please. Floor it, please. Okay, another great video from the Weekly World News that I love. So you work at Home Depot and some douche decides it, uh, well, maybe not Home Depot, but like Garden Center, and then they decide that they want to put a whole bunch of topsoil in their wagon, and they know that they can put an entire front-end loader full in their wagon, and you do it, whether you like it or not, I'm going to go ahead and pay the money, and you just do it. Can you imagine, you know, your customer service, okay, fine. You want the whole front-end loader? Let me go ahead and fill your wagon. Yeah, go ahead and fill your wagon. This happened in, uh, do, 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 where did this happen? I don't have the official location, but this is what happens when somebody, some douchebag who wants to, you know, grow his alias or whatever, wants the whole load in his wagon. But it's just getting worse. Phil, Phil, Phil. I'm driving my, what the hell is that thing? What kind of car is, it's like one of the smart cars that it's so small and dangerous that, and, and so very very just the people who drive it, they call it a smart car because they think they're smarter than you, but then they get in a traffic accident and they get crushed like little, you know, and they call it, how smart do you feel? Okay, uh, you can put that whole front end loader in my wagon. Here we go. Fine, I'll put it right here. Here we go. I'm going to put it in there, just like you said, in your little your little wagon there. That's, go ahead and put the whole thing. Okay, I'll do it. There, there, hmm. Mm. Wow. Okay. 
Have a great day. Thanks for coming to Home Depot or whatever. There you go. That's a full load. Okay. Finally, last video of the night. This is uh, something that is quite honestly uh, crazy. Hello, Jeffrey. Um, this is nuts, okay? This is a, a, a massive landslide in Norway that was captured, I'm not sure if this last week, and they've got all these people, they've lived in these houses for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And all of a sudden, imagine you're living here. This is nuts. This is nuts. Do not leave your smart device, your computer, or otherwise. Watch this. So there's a house. It's been there probably 100 years. 100 years on the shore of Norway. Watch this. Guys in there sitting, laying next to his wife or girlfriend. So did the earth move for you? Why, well, yes, it's moving right now. Why do you ask? Um, honey, why did the neighbor's house just pass us a couple minutes ago there? I want to go down to the fridge and get a beer. Do you need anything? Yeah, we need to get the hell out of here. Look at this! Look at this! Okay, so... Uh, there were no uh, deaths or injuries, although Finnmark Police's Torvin Halvari, who works at uh, IKEA, told Norway's NTB Newswire that they couldn't say with any certainty no one had been taken by it. We still have on-site crews working to assess the landside security or the Danger of new landslides. Here to here to here. Is that the language? Anyway, so uh, anyway, emergency rescues. Uh, they rescued a muddied, scared dog from this. Hey, honey, the landscaping we're going to do uh, this this spring probably going to put that on hold. Oh my God! I told you we should have put in that retaining wall, but who was listening? Who listened to me? Nobody listened to Dad. I wanted the retaining wall, but you said no. Wow. Let's fast forward. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That is unbelievable. And with that said, it's time for me to go. Thank you for joining me tonight, guys. I do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the show. We had some uh, you know serious stuff and some not so serious stuff, and I've way overextended my welcome. Um, thank you. Thanks for watching. Uh, my Newsmax show is on tomorrow at five on NewsmaxTV.com. If you want details, uh, thanks for all the heads up, by the way. And Randy, my God, uh, my liberal friend, you have an unfriended me like my other friend who said he never wants to see me again. Um, Thank you for watching tonight, guys. God bless you. I pray for peace. I pray for the country. And, uh, and you know, this. we can turn this year around. It doesn't have to suck forever. Uh, I'll see you. <laughs> you guys like that last video. Thanks for watching. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. God bless you. Uh, and I will see you again, if not tomorrow, maybe Sunday. See you then.